Hello and welcome back to Introduction to Dreamweaver CC. In this lesson, I want to give you a quick overview of the Dreamweaver interface. When you first open up Dreamweaver, you'll see the welcome screen as we see it here, and it has a few columns of items that you can choose from. The column on the left has options to open a recent item, or you can click on this open link here to open anything on your computer. The second column has a few options to create new files, HTML files, CSS files, less files, SAS, JavaScript, etc. Also towards the bottom, there's an option to create a new Dreamweaver site, which we'll talk about soon. In the third column, we have some videos that show some features of Dreamweaver that give some tutorials on how to use Dreamweaver. And, uh, and that's a great source to go to if you need more information. Once we have a file open, I'm going to click here to open up this index.html file. Once we have a file open, things look a little bit differently. First of all, the file opens up in our main window here. And at the bottom, we have our properties panel. And we can toggle between HTML options and CSS options in that properties panel. And then over here on the right, we have a series of other panels and panel sets that we can use. One of the panel sets that we will become familiar with is the files panel. And if we minimize this panel down here, we can see it better. And you can double click on any of these tabs to minimize them. So if we double click on that files tab, it will expand it, double click on it again, it will minimize it. So it's very easy to get tabs out of the way or get these panels out of the way if we need to make room for another panel. And because of the resolution of the video that I'm recording here, you'll find me opening and closing or expanding and minimizing these panels quite a bit. So in our files panel, if we have a Dreamweaver site set up, we can see all of the files contained within our site in our folder structure. And we can easily add new files to our site this way by right clicking on the site folder and clicking on new file or new folder. We can also open any of these files by double clicking on them. We can even take an image and drag that image into our file if we want to do it that way. Uh, so there's a lot you can do with this files panel, including setting up uh, an FTP server. So you can set it up so that you can automatically upload these files to your FTP server if you so desire. Next to the files panel is a tab for the insert panel. And this gives you a lot of options for inserting different HTML elements into your document. We also have here, the CSS designer panel, which we're going to be using a lot in this series as we style our pages and get them to look like what we want them to look like. And we also have a CSS transitions panel, which allows us to create some subtle animations. And we're going to use that to create some hover animations eventually. So those are your panels. You can open more panels by going to the window menu. And this gives you a list of all the panels you have access to. So if we wanted, for example, our assets panel, we can click on that. And that will open it up as a free floating panel. Now, once you have this free floating panel, we can drag it and hover it over here. And you'll notice that when we get right next to this panel set over here, that this little shaded bar expands out with a little blue stripe on it. And if we see that bar, then we can release and it will attach that assets panel basically to another column here. So it creates another column for us that we can then use and we can actually minimize this column. You'll notice in the upper right hand corner here, there's this little double arrow. And if we click on that, it will collapse that column so that we just see an icon and the name of that panel. And if we want to see that panel now, we can click on it to expand it, click on it again to minimize it. Also, we can minimize this even further by hovering over the left edge of this panel set here and clicking and dragging to the right to the point where we can just see the icon itself. And you'll find a lot of people working that way where they have one full column here with some panels that they use a lot. And then another panel just to the left of that, where we have just some icons here that you can open and close at will. And uh, if you want to get rid of this extra panel set over here, we can just click on any of the panels within that panel set. You'll notice at the top of this particular assets panel, there's a little icon here with a series of vertical lines. If we grab that and drag it away, then it will make it into a free floating panel again, and we can expand it out and take a look at it that way. And then we can just click on the X button here to close it. And then at any time you can get back to the assets panel just by going to the windows menu. So I would encourage you to go through the window menu and take a look at all of the different panels that are available to you. 
because the more you get to know these panels, the quicker you'll be able to work in Dreamweaver. And we won't be able to cover everything in this course. This is just an introductory course, but uh, hopefully we'll be able to give you enough information that you'll be able to go in and explore this some more on your own. Another option we have, if we do decide to open some more panels, let's say we have our assets panel and we drag it over here. Also notice that you can drag it up here uh, or down here to the bottom so that it snaps just above the properties panel and you can minimize it that way. And if you have larger screen real estate, it might make sense to do something like that. Uh, but uh, just wanted to point out that that over here on the right isn't the only place. Also, you can drag it over to this rightmost panel here. And if we hover below or in between these two panel sets where we just see that blue bar there and release, then it basically creates another panel set there. And we can double click on that to open it up, double click to minimize it. And, uh, and there we go. Now, if we click it and drag it out and then drag it back on, and instead of dragging it in between these two panel sets, if we drag it on top of one of these panel sets, then it adds it as another tab within that panel set. So there are plenty of options there for customizing the way your panels show up. So let's say that we've added some panels here on the left. Let's minimize that down to an icon and let's go ahead and open up one or two more. So let's open up a history panel here. Let's drag that underneath the assets panel and we can drag it on top of the assets panel and you'll see that it puts them both within the same panel set there. And if we expand it out and, uh, and click here on this button, then you'll see that it turns it into tabs within the same panel set. Let's minimize that again and drag that down. So let's say that we just have a few items here, maybe the validation panel, and actually, no, I'm going to leave that down at the bottom. Let's leave that alone there. But uh, we already have a couple over here. So let's say that we wanted to save this so that every time we open Dreamweaver, we have this panel set that we've set up. Well, the way we do that, if we come up here to the upper right hand corner here, you'll notice we have this little drop down that right now says compact. And if we click on that, you'll see a little drop down. And in that drop down, one of the options is new workspace. So we can save this as a new workspace by clicking on that and give it a name. So I can call it Craig. Click on OK. And then now you'll notice from this drop down that Craig is one of the options. So if we click to go back to the compact option, you'll notice that we have the original setup with no extra icons over here. But if we go back to the workspace that we saved here, we now get those two options, those two panels back. So there are an unlimited number of ways that you can customize this. Uh, another thing I wanna point out about our interface here is that up at the top, we have our document toolbar and this toolbar has a couple of different things on it. One of the things it has is a series of tabs here that lets you go back and forth between all of the files that are tied to this current file. So we're dealing with our index.html file here, which links to a couple of different CSS files. So we can go back and forth between those CSS files and the HTML file by clicking on source code very easily. Also, you'll notice there are a couple of different views here. We have the design view where we can just drag objects onto the stage and, and enter in text like we would kind of in a uh, text editor or in a word processor. Uh, so that's what the design view does for us. We also have the code view. If we click on that, it's just straight code. So we can type in code however we want to. Now we can still use the insert panel here and the insert menu to insert HTML elements that way but here we have a code view instead of a, uh, a design view. Also, we have a split view, which allows us to see both at the same time. So if we don't wanna search through all of our code for the logo, we can just click on the logo here and our cursor moves to that logo tag in our code here. And we can see that line number is highlighted here and we can see our code for that logo there. So that's another option that we have there. And if we go back to design view and then click on live, that will turn on live view mode where you can see what your website's most likely going to end up looking like. Now, again, if we turn live view off, our site doesn't look so good. But if we turn that back on, we can get an idea of what it's going to look like once all of the CSS is applied. And, uh, and that usually gives you a pretty good indication of what your final site is going to look like. So this is more of a browser view of your design. Now you still want to 
test your site in different browsers. You don't want to just test it in this live view mode, but this is a very helpful way to view your page without having to go back and forth between Dreamweaver and your browser over and over again. One more option you'll see here when you're ready to test it in a browser is this little globe icon. And when we click on that, we can choose which browser we want to view in. And uh, so if we want to preview in Google Chrome, we can click on that and it will open up Chrome and we can view what our website looks like in Chrome. And again, I would urge you to test it in as many browsers as possible. So those are a few interface options that I wanted to show you up front. Obviously, we'll look at these items more in depth and we'll explore the interface more as we work through this video series. But I just wanted to give you a quick overview so that everything will make sense as we start working with our HTML files. So thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.